And... Allen & Sons Seal Coating. Yes, we always want to thank our good sponsors right there at 847-980-6914. Allen & Sons Seal Coating. For your birthday, did you get that? Did I got a it? gift certificate for from Allen & Sons, Sons Seal oh, Coating. <laughs> I knew it. Anonymous a donor. A dream come a true. Anonymous donor. I wonder who that was. Oh, that's sensational. And don't forget my motivational website and blog at lauradionjones.com where you can also find a link to my website uh, through our WRMM website under programming the Laura Dion Jones Show. And in the studio with us today are Mike Hunziger, Jeff Myers, Kyle Balt, and Bruce Johnson. Meanwhile, you're listening to the Laura Dion Jones Show on WRMM, 1410 AM. And if you've got something to say, call us, 847-931-1410. We take questions. We do good guy talk. And back to our interview with Bruce Johnson, the guy who walked across the United States, now on his second time. Ran. So, ran. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. You just gave him 2,000-year walker miles to hear. I'm the walker. He's yeah. the runner. How, fa how, how many miles an hour do you run? It, it just depends. If I want to stop and take my lunch, that's all counted in my What's time. What's your training time when you know you're out I mean? to run? When you do a 5K, 10K, 5 miles? I, I don't know the Ks. I know the miles. I, I'm, I'm usually, if I pick it up, you know, I can run, I'm doing the nine minute mile, but most of the time I'm chugging along at about a ten, eleven minute mile. God He's known for his durability over, over the years. He's got great durability. Mm -hmm. Me too. That's, that's stamina, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 And you like to do it. I mean, that helps a lot. Well, I didn't like it at first, but I got to tell you, once you get into that daily cardio, no, that's why didn't I didn't like it at first. No, I hated it. Why did you get into it then? I mean, because it was the only way for me to get the weight boiled off. Oh, wow. I was doing a diet, and I was playing around with um, exercising. I lost 40 pounds my first year, which is not bad. I was 317 pounds, but my husband said, you're just playing at working out. When you get serious, the weight will come off. So that January 1st, I made a pact with my two dogs. One hour a day for the next 35 days, and after that, I haven't stopped since. I take, I walk on Sundays every day, and so I just. So your dog's got 25,000 miles in too. Well, pretty close. Wow. I would say not, and maybe 20. They gotta be in great shape. They're in excellent shape, and they would get to the point where they would demand the afternoon oh, walk, and Lucky would jump nice. on my keyboard. Wow. He would not. He would not take <laughs> no for an answer. Of and course, he could type very well for a dog. And you know something. Yes, he can, actually. <laughs> yes. You'd be surprised. Who sends out half of my emails? Nah. Okay. Um, listen, you've done 20 marathons. Tell us about running in the desert. I can't imagine that one. I saw some pictures of you on the website running through like that. Like it's my favorite part for some reason. It's so it. mystical. You can see your whole day's run in front of you. That's what bothers you know? me. And then there it is in front of you. And usually you can see the a car coming for miles. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, I don't know why. It's just the mystique of running across the desert. It's, it's one of some of my favorite. No kidding. Yeah, I like it all. You know, I like the Appalachians. I like the Rockies. But for some reason, you get out in that desert, you feel so free and, you know. Hot, it, sweltering yeah. scorpions. Yeah. Yeah, no? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't can get I to run, see can that Can I walk along here, with though, an umbrella? You know? So you kind of, yeah, sure. Jeez Louise. There are no rules, you know. So. We make them up as we go, right? Sure, as long as we do the distance every day. Listen, I know a gal from my health club. Her name is Nancy Fudash. She's a trainer there. She runs those desert endurance runs. Oh you know the ones I'm yes. talking about? Yeah. Those hardcore. I couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. And I was wondering if you'd ever get into that. No, I can't take the heat like I used to. Mm. No, that's. I know my. You have to know your limitations. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, you can I dream, do. but you have to be realistic. If you think you can do something, you probably can. You know, but you have to know your limitations also. You know, I entered a triathlon and almost drowned because I didn't think I needed to really know how to swim. Yeah, surprise for you. You were just going to float. Mm. <laughs> Where was your triathlon? It was uh, Devil's Head Triathlon. It was just a sprint triathlon. And, uh, some Where you do 20, 20, 20? No, it was uh, a quarter, whole tri? quarter mile swim oh, okay. and a 24-mile bike and then uh -huh. a uh, 5K run. And uh, I Where'd got you out the to swim? the first buoy and... Uh, I had to get rescued. It get was very out. embarrassing. Oh, get out. Yeah, I can't. I, I had a, I had a suit on and everything. Mm -hmm. It was very embarrassing. I'll never forget it. When I did the triathlon in '88, though, it was on a hot August day, five in the morning. It was like 99 degrees, 100 percent humidity, and the, we did our mile swim in Lake Michigan from Oak Street to Beach mm -hmm. to Olive Park over by Navy Pier. And I have to tell you this: that water was 59 degrees. I didn't have a body glove. 
because I didn't have one custom made. And in those days, I was considered full figured at size 14, and they didn't have mm -hmm. them to fit me. The water was so cold that the only way to get a breath was to s alternate my back to the backstroke. Mm. Because you couldn't, you know how you swim and you draw a breath, a b deep breath, you could go, <gasps> that was it. Just, <gasps> because it just constricted your chest. I will never forget that day. Every time I talk about it, it's, you know how it flashes in front of your eyes in one second? Here's a question I have for you. Um, at one point in your run, uh, you said you do 200 miles in eight days and you need new shoes. And I averaged 200 miles in three months and needed new shoes. So I get new shoes every three months. And when I read that, that you needed new shoes in eight days, I was like boggled. Do they donate the shoes to you or do you mm -hmm. buy these shoes? Nope, and I can feel it on my body when I'm ready because mm -hmm. you keep track of each mile. And when you're running every single day, that distance, see, I think that's the key. When I'm running around here, I, a pair of running shoes lasts me more than 200 miles, r roughly four. Really? But when I'm doing 26 every day, you break them down, that heat and that friction of those for eight hours a Dang. day, eight, eight days in a row, and uh, you've broke them down and you can feel it in your joints the next day. Especially you change your shoes, yeah. and it's like, okay. Invigorating. So you know that every 200 miles, so. Wow. No, I don't have a shoe sponsor. I basically got uh, Mr. Jordan, uh, would you hold Bruce Johnson is on the line? So I'm, I'm not, <laughs> when I get as big as him, maybe Nike will talk to me. But, uh, Why don't I'm you back. write to Nike directly? Uh, I'm going to yeah. write to the CEO of Brooks. Yeah. And tell him I'm his poster child. I think child. you're more of an incredible story than I am, though. I'm really impressed. Two hundred. How can you 2003, say that? 2003, you did 25,000 miles. Yeah. That's but incredible. how many years is that? Do the math. It doesn't matter. It's three to four. four I five walk five in from the parking lot, there and you you're huffing and puffing. <laughs> well, <go>. somewhat. <laughs> Let's. Started in 1978. Wow. I cannot believe you're over 25,000 miles yet. Yeah. And I have documentation. I have kept it from day one. Yeah. So if anybody Rooking should dispute me. kind of slowed me, me down a little. Broken right. backs, five yeah. knee surgeries. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I can, I can uh, how many years that. in a row did you do the Fox Trot? You did that for many years until I did then. that many years. Probably yeah. from 78 until your fall. Yeah. 95. Yeah. Yeah. Fox <laughs> Trot's a good run because it's a true 10 mile run and they get a nice crowd out here. It's a fantastic course. So that's. That's why the Foxtrot is, uh, has always done well here in Elgin, because nobody has a 10-mile run anymore. You know, they're all 10Ks. Yeah. This is a true 10-miler, oh. so it brings some, you know, you Chihuahua. get a little extra here. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's nice. How do you eat when you, uh, how do you eat to maintain your weight? I got my uh, support driver, drops me off at 5 o'clock in the morning, sets the odometer, drives up 5 miles, hops out of the truck, chalks the side of the road of 5, sets out my little snack, drives up to the next 5, chalks the road, puts a 10, 15, 20, 25, he's got my bags that I got laid out on the seat set for me, and as I run, they're on the side of the road. I grab them, I stop and eat for a second, or I just put them in my pouch and keep on going. So my food's left out on the side of the road. I don't want him sitting on the side of the road for eight hours. He'd be bored out of his mind. Eight hours a day for three and a half months. So I let him go ahead, set my stuff out on the side of the road. My, my miles, see it, the, always coyotes eating my food. I right? was gonna say, come Raccoons, on. Then. coyotes, possums, but uh, at least you know, share. I get you know Road three kill. out of five meals every day, which is fine. What and how much do you eat? Uh, in the morning I eat uh, my five mile mark I'm usually fine so my 10 mile mark I got milk and oatmeal raisin <gasps> cookies out and then at the 10 15 mile mark I got peanut butter sandwich potato chips a couple of M&M peanuts and mm -hmm. a coke mm -hmm. and then at the uh, 20 mile mark I usually have some sort of a snack uh, oatmeal cookies and a Gatorade or something and then at the 25 mile mark uh, my support driver will be there waiting for me. So mostly carbohydrates, I've noticed with this, but you're working those off you so quickly. You crave, you know, you get, you crave, and your body. Uh, you're never so in touch with your body because it tells you exactly what to eat. I hate spaghetti. I never eat spaghetti. I hate peanut butter. Never eat peanut butter on the run. I'm eating spaghetti and peanut butter the mm -hmm. whole run. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Yep, it works. It digests easily. It gives me what I need, but. But this is for somebody who listened to him. He's running 26 miles a day. This is not for any of the Elgin's Biggest Losers who, who are trying to lose weight. <laughs> By eating low carb, I'm sitting here fanning myself, and, mm -hmm. and Jeff's holding up his hand for me to shut up and let you speak. And yeah, I'm like, the, I'm getting... oatmeal. I was like, oh, no. I was like, oh, no. That's poison for my kids, for any, my people. Any idea how many right. calories you consume a day? And any idea how many calories you would burn in, in one day, a 25-mile run? 
Well, on the first run I lost, I came in at 224 pounds when I started the run. I lost 33 pounds in 33 days, and then I didn't learn lose another pound after that. Okay. I maintained my 195 across the whole United States then. So you got down to my ideal weight, and I ate anything and any time I wanted, sure, and uh, sure. I stayed the exact same weight. How tall so, are you? I'm six foot. And you're 195, give or take? 200 right now. Yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah, you're in good yeah. shape. Uh, sometimes you just have to stop, says the mountain. Give us a for instance. Your legs just say forget it, that mountain. Sometimes I had to run up 22 <laughs> miles with no downhill, so it's like forget it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that the kind of divide? You know, it's the most beautiful part, the mountains, but your legs are killing you and you're dying, so you can enjoy it so much only because you're so, you know, you got to get to the top and it just keeps going. So even though you're enjoying the most beautiful mountains, you still have to go up them. So that it's like a catch-22. You're enjoying them, but your lungs and your legs are killing you. But And then when you get down to the top of the mountain, I like to just turn around, you know, like, okay, sure, sure. I beat you. I God made bless it. You. you know, thank you for being there, but uh, see you later. I don't know. Yeah. You can, might get me into a whole new uh, bag <laughs> right. here. I'm not sure. I'm getting itchy. You could do anything you wanted to do. Let's hope Absolutely. I can win the Oprah Winfrey um, Good luck. talk show host sure. contest competition. Don't Bruce. forget to vote for me, everyone. And then Bruce can be a guest. Absolutely. Bruce, with all your running, you've been running so many places. Is there, is there any place on the earth that you would like to run that you have never run? Yeah, I'd like to run across Alaska. I always thought that would be neat. You know, that'd be neat. That would be cool. But Absolutely. I'd have to have a support driver with me, I think, for, yeah. the, for the bear you'd need, you'd need one of those ice truck drivers. <laughs> See this bottle of water? You ice. would need, you would need yeah. bear repellent the size of this. <laughs> yeah, right. They have it up there. Yeah. I've been well, there many that's times. That's the way the good Lord's going to have me go. Well, then that's the way it's going to be. Plus, okay. you're going to need a bodysuit of a net bodysuit if you go near Fairbanks oh, because they have they have them they're as big as as big as your hand. Ugh. I know, I know. That's all right. Um, let's see. Sometimes you just have to stop. Says the mountain. I think in life, um, reconnoiter maybe, but never stop. I saw a T-shirt the other day and it had never, 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 never times nine give up. Do you know what I mean? On the back of the t-shirt, I had to get real close <laughs> to count all the nevers. And I tapped the girl on the shoulder. She was sitting at the bar and the grill in the health club doing a Sudoku. And I tapped her on the shoulder. I said, excuse me, but thank you for wearing that shirt today. And thank you for reminding me. Because I was having a little bit of a low day. And it was a great reminder to just come up the stairs. And I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this today. And then see her back there with the nine nevers. Never, 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 never give up. Um, uh, you know what? Tell us a bit. Let's switch gears here a little and tell us a bit about the Crisis Center here in Elgin and what they're up to because I know that you do a lot of uh, fundraising for them and running for them, correct, Amundo? Yes, absolutely. I looked at a bunch of charities. I mean, there, there's a lot of charities out there and they're, they're all good. But uh, when I came into the Crisis Center, I uh, met everybody and uh, people can just walk in there and get bags of food and clothes and every time I go there, they're they're helping somebody, you know, that uh, looks like they really need help. And uh, I think it was a perfect fit for me. It's an Elgin uh, charity. Uh, they're struggling terribly. They were so happy to uh, have me come there and help them with this. Uh, it, it, was, it was a natural choice for me. They uh, are under a lot of uh, stress right now and having to work without getting paid because uh, the state owes them $327,000 and uh, they need to get paid and uh, I'm asking if the audience could uh, contact uh, www.illinoisgov or 1-800-642-3112 1-800-642-3112 and just kind of shout out, give the crisis center a shout out, and say, "Hey, can you can you pay these guys? Because uh, they've been provided services since December of 2009, and they haven't been paid for it yet. And uh, their unpaid furlough is within six weeks, and uh, they're going to have to lay off additional staff. And uh -uh. you know, I know all those people down there, and I feel so sorry for them. And and yet they still keep helping people, even though they don't have the money, and they just keep pulling this out of their hat. But they're you know, I'm, I'm really starting to worry about them. Uh, they have no choice. They have to continue on like a lot of other people do. 